Responding to Mahatma Gandhi's call, thousands of people gathered at Gwalia Tank Maidan in August of 1942. Seeing the strength and momentum of this peaceful gathering, British authorities relentlessly tear-gassed the crowd. Gwalia Tank Maidan was subsequently renamed Agast Kranti Maidan. Agast Kranti Maidan now is a much different open space located in the south of Mumbai and surrounded by a dense neighborhood. It consists of Gandhiji's home in Bombay, Mani Bhavan, the New Era School, Tejpal Road to its west, Labanam Road and Krishna Sanghi Road to its south. Regrettably, the Maidan is open only for a few hours to public every day. Hawkers have encroached much of the space right in front of the Maidan entrance. The ad hoc garbage dump on Tejpal Road is steadily growing. The tall metal fences compartmentalize the Maidan and the tempos parked outside have become a nuisance. Two things remind us of freedom movement history. The Gandhi Memorial inside the Maidan, which commemorates the Quit India movement, and the Gokul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College on the west of the Maidan, which is the birthplace of the Indian National Congress. The main entrance of the Agastanti Maidan. But take a look at it. Vehicular encroachment, hawkers, haphazard fencing. It's not befitting of the location of the Quit India movement. And we want to change that in a big way. It must have a grand entrance. And that entrance will be right here where I'm standing. It'll take people from here to the entrance of the Agastranti Maidan. And this entire vehicular encroached portion that you see before you will be a vibrant pedestrian plaza designed for people, not vehicles. Gokul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College, birthplace of the Indian National Congress in 1885 considered perhaps the first big push towards India's freedom. 1942, Quit India movement right here in Agastranti Maidan, considered one of the last big pushes for the freedom movement. Our makeover plan intends to connect 1885 with 1942 through a freedom trail, which will allow visitors, tourists, students, whoever comes to the Maidan to live through the years 1885 to 1942 and to study the people, personalities, places, events that shaped the freedom movement. The Agastranti Maidan is perhaps the most overfenced public place in Mumbai. And not just the perimeter, even within its small four-acre area, there are seven separate compartments, ad hoc, unnecessary compartments. The only segregation that may be required is between a hard sports area or a soft recreation zone. The proposed recreational space is demarcated by the Kranti Plaza to the north, and the new children's play area to the south. This area will include programs for seating, reading and meeting points. It has a beautifully designed canopy that offers shade during the day as well as protection from rain. The seating has been carefully planned based on observed patterns and requirement of existing users. Azad Maidan, like Agastranti Maidan, has played a pivotal role in India's freedom movement. It was here that two sepoys, Mangal Kadia and Sayyad Hussain, were executed by cannon fire in full public view during the First War of Independence in 1857. Notably, Azad Maidan is the cradle of cricket in India. It hosted India's first ever test match in 1933 and then went on to host the famous Bombay Pentangular Cricket Tournament as well. Many of Indian cricket's stalwarts have been groomed on this very Maidan. Spread over an area of roughly 40 acres, Azad Maidan is surrounded by the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus, the headquarters of the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai, Metro Cinema and the Bombay Gymkhana. The Ensa complex on Azad Maidan houses offices of political parties and influential unions. Many of these have unclear property titles even today. The prestigious press club, Mumbai Marathi Patrakar Sangh, Amar Jawan Memorial and the protest area are other important components of Azad Maidan. The eastern edge of Azad Maidan, right across Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus and right across the headquarters of the Municipal Corporation, has this small little public place that you can see behind me. It's very, very busy throughout the day, right up to the wee end of office hours, up to 9 o'clock in the evening. It's littered with some hawkers, random eateries, photocopy centres, one municipal gymkhana which is poorly used. But a large part of it has been taken up for vehicular parking. These vehicles all belong to the MCGM, it's the reserve parking. Now we believe that such an open space 
in the heart of a central business district in a heritage precinct really ought to be celebrated and that's exactly what the Azadi Plaza does. The Azadi Plaza is a proposed large public area along the southeastern edge of Azad Maidan. The makeover would enhance this space into a dynamic plaza with a wide range of eateries and retail shops, while opening up the visual connectivity with the expanse of the Maidan behind it. The Azadi Plaza will have an overground and an underground section. The overground section will be a vast open space, Grand Plaza. The underground plaza will be a commercial plaza which will help towards the financial feasibility of such a project. It will also connect the proposed Mumbai Metro to the CST station in a seamless manner. The Mumbai Press Club behind me and the Mumbai Marathi Patrakar Sang to my right. Last few reminders of Mumbai's glorious journalistic history. But look at the state they are in. We envision the establishment of a Mumbai Media Centre and museum, which is a large amalgamated space with modern conference facilities, large conference rooms, where people can hold press conferences instead of going to five-star hotels, they can all come here, where people can learn about the journalistic heritage that Mumbai has to offer, and once again, make it befitting of a metropolis, the size and scale of Mumbai. Azad Maidan, the birthplace of Indian cricket, right here in 1933, 100,000 spectators watched as a team led by C.K. Naidu took on England for the first time on Indian soil and Lala Amarnath scored a century on debut. Like that, there are so many stories to share. The club behind me, Sasanian Cricket Club, has been standing here for over 150 years or close to it. And yet, it lies in shambles, a temporary structure, no toilets, no drinking water, no showering facility. We feel that this ground deserves to be preserved, its history and heritage need to be preserved, including that of these clubs. And world-class pavilions need to come up here, which have at least the basic facilities and allow spectators to view the game and enjoy it. The central business district of Fort in Mumbai, perhaps the most iconic central business district, the most important in the entire nation. Churchgate and BT stations ensure that millions of daily footfalls are seen on this CBD. Many of them are pedestrian commuters, much like what you see behind me, where even at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, people are busy walking all along the CBD. Our proposal seeks to convert this into a pedestrian priority corridor where pedestrians can feel, feel safe, be comfortable and get from point A to point B with ease and comfort. Bombay Gym Khana occupies nine acres of public space on Azad Maidan and it is a world-class facility much like the other gymkhanas across the city of Mumbai. But they are home only to Mumbai's rich, famous and privileged. There is really nothing in place for the common man. And that is why our vision sees a place for a Mumbai gymkhana. A grand vision which will spread across the city with one motto. Sports and fitness for everybody. Right across the Bombay gymkhana to the south, is the proposed location for the Mumbai Gymkhana, where the Mumbai School Sports Association, MSSA, stands today. It will amalgamate the activities of the MSSA, of the Godrej Scouts Pavilion, Scouts and Guides Pavilion, of all the 22 cricket pitches here, the soccer pitches which are across on Cross Maidan, the Goan Sports Club, the Karnataka Sports Club, and make them all into one consolidated Mumbai Gymkhana, which will be headquartered here. Why have we produced this report titled India at 70? because Mumbai's heritage associated with its glorious contribution to India's freedom struggle is today in a terrible state of degradation and neglect. This can be very clearly seen in the shocking state of Azad Maidan, August Kranti Maidan, Sardar Graha, the place where Lokman Tilak lived and passed away, just to give a few examples. This is an insult to the heroes and martyrs of our freedom movement. In fact, it's an insult to tricolor itself. This must stop. Today, Mumbai needs a major makeover, comprehensive makeover. And this makeover must begin with the transformation of all the places associated with the freedom movement in Mumbai. Hence, our report, we appeal to the government and the people to come together to start a major transformation effort as we celebrate the 70th anniversary of India's independence in 2017.
we remember a few people. We remember fewer events. We forget the places.